Hi guys, it's a bit sad, but it seems I need to provide some sort of explanation. And I hope some Muslims who are going crazy in the comment section of this video will learn something. Maybe they can do something else than just display their small brain and big mouths. What is all this about? Well, I was graciously allowed an interesting hour with six theists on a panel on a Muslim Dawah channel. SC Dawah, Speakers Corner Dawah. I've never had this before, but now it saddens me that I even need to make this explanation video to counter dishonest zealots. But hey, I guess that's part of the game when dealing with Muslim apologists. And of course, true to form, I was not allowed to say much. After a few seconds, someone would always talk over me. So what I'm going to do is upload the entire video where I participated and then upload this to document my comments and rebuttals. Now, the video title originally was Join Us Live, Were You Created and Why? However, for some odd reason, the finished video was now changed a bit to reflect my participation to that ending, though, Were You Created and Why? And now they uploaded a shortened one hour version with just me titled Subur and Atheist in brackets stop spamming Clash Live on SC Online. Well, it was a CDAW, not SC Online. And it was not a clash. It was just me trying to make a point and Subur not getting it. Oh, well. And I, come on, the whole thing is only because I am not allowed to comment. Right? If, if they were to make videos, I would make a comment. Everything would have been dandy. But they censored me. And this is what has led to my now trying to see how many notches I can take them down. And they still censor me. And I've used up most of my channel names and they're all blocked on SC Dawa due to the strict censorship, trying to protect their fragile brains from challenges and undue strain due to thinking. So my expectation of staying on longer than 30 seconds was <laughs> rather low. Now, when, when they took me onto the panel, I quickly gave my 30 second comment on whether I was created and was expecting to be kicked out the way it normally works. But I wasn't. Hello, this was getting interesting. So I went there to try and do four things. Number one, show that creation can mean very different things. So if I put two pieces of Lego on top of each other, is that creation? If I go and, and, and I build something complex, like a, like a space shuttle or something, is that creation? Where a group of people have to do this? Or is creation really only well, creating a human body or a human being by a supernatural entity somewhere outside of this universe? I don't know. So there's different types of creation. Now, the second thing I wanted to do is state that my personal creation because the question was, was I created? There were no supernatural entities or supernatural processes detected anywhere. And then third, provide my expectation of the existence of this best of all creators and the expected results versus reality. So in other words, compare the claims made in the Quran and then compare them to reality. And then number four, assure that I was not manufactured like a toaster or to fulfill the function. Like I was not put into this world intentionally by my parents to be, you know, like a, I don't know, a pilot to fly them around the world. Now, I only managed the first three, more or less, and, and even this was chaotic. And I, come on, I'm, I need to be honest, I must admit I could have done a lot better as I failed in maintaining any momentum. I failed to maintain my authority and the serenity I had planned on initially. Why? Well, I realized, okay, there were, there were several factors here. So I realized that using Chrome suddenly changed the microphone to something like 20%. And I had no way of changing it back like, on the fly. I had initially expected, you know, a stay of just a few seconds and did not bother setting up my normal microphone and use the wireless headset I normally use on, on the phone. So because I retreated into the defensive things when got hectic, I did not follow my line, but allowed myself to get sidetracked. And this gave the theists on the panel the opportunity to use their standard gotcha rhetoric. Not honest or correct, but effective if you have gullible fanboys. And that's also why we never even got to the fourth point. 
So in all, it's actually my fault and I could have done a lot better. And all right, better luck next time. But so let me unravel this a bit, and mostly for Muslims who automatically assume what was said by their fellow Muslims must be correct, even when it is not. One thing I need to point out in advance, Zabur had watched my critique of his appearance in Speaker's Corner in his previous two videos. So he knew that I had embarrassed him and rebutted his claims and had demonstrated that he totally, he's, he's totally clueless and still plays as though he knows something about the topic. But now in the live chat, he pretended as though he had no idea what I was talking about. So my question in the last video was, is this Subua really this stupid or is he just ignorant and deceptive? Well, we have an answer, a resounding yes. <laughs> okay, so let me go chronologically and comment as I go along. So I, I will take some snippets now, ignoring the trivial parts and commenting only on the really egregious moments. And there's plenty. And so if, if you doubt something, you can see the entire encounter in the one hour long version of my interaction with them separately to show I am not tricking or quote mining anyone. The complete four hour video, yeah, this is on the SC Dawa channel, also shows how Muslims can debate with Christians or polytheists or whatever, but they can't handle non-theists like me. They're totally lost. Okay, so I got there, hot and bothered, late, and as real life tends to interfere at times, still trying to sort out the microphone, actually thinking that it was working. And this is where I was then let onto the panel from backstage because nobody knew this Fred identity, which I've had like 10 years ago, which YouTube now released from a lifetime ban. But of course, after wiping out all the videos, it's a pity, hundreds of them. Now, for some reason, my avatar does not show up on StreamYard. So the white round thing, this is me. This is what it would have looked like. And later on, because they kick me a couple of times and bring me back in, um, this uh, suddenly StreamYard decides, okay, well, now I'm going to show it. I don't know how Fred, that works. Uh, welcome to a show. You I delivered my first yes. two points and was expecting to be booted, especially since I was told that I was the last caller and had to be quick because the show had already been running like three hours or something. But now, instead, Mansour deflected and brought up origin of existence, which in my eyes is sort of irrelevant here, since this was about me. Was I created, not the universe? Okay, but since everything in existence in the universe goes back to the origin of this universe, well, I answered the question anyway. Today, I don't think I would. I would keep it on topic and say, look, it's not about the universe, it's about me. Because Mansur again deflected, going into the standard Islam Dawa of absolute this and absolute that. And, and I noticed that I screwed up here as well because I was presented with a false dichotomy. Something and I didn't now. Either something existed always or something didn't exist at all. There's nothing, absolute nothingness. I didn't spot it, I didn't notice it. Because existed always or not at all. What I'm saying here is that the material everything in the universe consists of is the result of the universe, not a divine creation ex nihilo. But another option could be that something comes into being in the meantime or whatever. But what came to my mind at that time, all that my brain could think of is the time loop by Dr. Richard Gott. I couldn't even remember his first name. Oh, that's embarrassing actually. And this is where Subur recognized my voice and realized who this was. At least that's what I picked up from his body language. So it was quite funny. Now, the, the somewhat primitive and aggressive Tony was butting in all the time, making a case for the theory of evolution, but I'm not sure he realized this. I, I, I don't think he knew this is what he was doing in his eagerness to score a point here by addressing something I'd never claimed. I'm, I'm not sure he was even a Muslim, but he was just as helpless. I got frustrated with him and I, I, okay, I called him an idiot because he was constantly butting in and making stupid points. And it, I was immediately kicked out. Like, you know, <laughs> like someone had their finger hovering over the mouse button, just waiting to eject me, just looking for an excuse to get rid of me. These clouds are so hilarious and, and they're so scared. I don't know why. And yeah, and this is quite funny, Mansour unknowingly admits this is a very bad show. Oh, I'm sure there are other very bad shows where you can join and have your insults there. <laughs> so I am graciously let in again and they trip over 
over each other to now really show me. And okay, granted, my argument was not the best. And yeah, I could have done better. But I think it was good enough for this instance. And I started edging into my third item by pointing out that there was no evidence of any eternal supernatural entity or whatever. And this joker, Tony, then said he could easily provide evidence of his creator, but didn't. I don't know, maybe he has the guts to join us on the show and present it, but I don't know, I somehow I doubt it. Now, Sabur starts off with a rather mundane rant, by any contents worth considering. But after just a few seconds, he does the only thing that Sabur does, and that is quote by an entropy of, of some or other you know, philosopher. Okay, to set the record straight, I don't shun or reject or hate or dismiss or whatever philosophy. There is a time and a place where it is not only important, but essential. But only bringing up names and only claiming you are quoting someone does not make sense in this environment. I have fact-checked Sabur many times and I've realized and demonstrated that he misquotes, he misrepresents and even when he doesn't, he misunderstands what is said. Sometimes he understands the complete opposite of what the person is trying to say. Now, can I check here and now what he is saying, what he is saying somebody else is saying? No. Do I trust him in what he claims someone else is saying? Hell no. But at least does what he is saying and why he is quoting someone make sense? No, not even that. He's addressing a claim I never made. The classic strawman. He waffles on and on without using his brain and can't understand that bad design that I am claiming is based on existing biological features, which I am comparing to other existing biological features, not perfect design. So a person with a functioning hip in my eyes is better off than a person without a functioning hip. Okay, so I'm, I'm not pulling out stuff from the Quran or other fairy tales or science fiction novels. This is reality. But our poor Subur does not grasp that, nor does that this, this fool Tony. Nor, apparently, the Muslims in the chat or the ones now commenting on the video published by Hesi Dawa. I think a clinical psychology was have. I mean, you would have a field day looking at those comments. They're actually quite funny. Now, Sabur is highly deceptive here, starting his talking down session to score points with his fanboys who love this trash talk, even though he is the one actually getting beaten up. Another tactic he uses is this silly laugh when he is cornered and has no idea what to do. Fred, Fred one step at a time, you seem to have a bit of a hearing problem. Repeat my argument so I understand what you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, this is another tactic I and anyone dealing with these dishonest apologists need to watch out for. The condescending questioning. Instead of keeping up the momentum, I fell for it and submitted to the questions. Because we're all taught we need to be good boys and answer the questions. I should have ignored his silly school headmaster stunt and move on. But I did not, and <laughs> I paid the price. It takes me minutes before I could get out and start fresh. And at this point, you can see how the mods are muting me. Yet, Mansa will later claim this never happened. The mods are only waiting for an excuse to mute and slash or eject me to protect their brains from being challenged. For Muslim apologists, censorship is much easier than thinking, it seems. Now, Sabur still can't grasp that his condescending and arrogant manner doesn't work with me, and he can't address my line of reasoning, so he grins sheepishly and thinks that using philosophers is the answer. What I object to, again, is not using philosophical reasoning, but misquoting and quote-mining individuals appealing to their authority. What doesn't help is this Tony fool who keeps on butting in with his really childish stuff. Then this FMT guy, he also starts interrupting. But then Subur, in his arrogance and false sense of superiority, wants this all to himself. But he's too much of a coward to come and talk to me directly. And he will admit to this at the end of the video. But he's trying to show off here and he fails over and over. 
he shows he's completely missed the point because I will make arguments all on my own without the help of anyone. Wait, hang on, Fred. Your entire argument was philosophical and it was poor. Sabur is unable to do so and accuses me of making an argument he considers to be philosophical. But, okay, this is me and not me hiding behind someone and someone else saying something. This is me. And I'm not hiding behind someone else some saying something I don't even understand. Now, if this to him sounds like somebody else might have said it and that this is now philosophical, well, then so be it. This is not black magic or something. And I'm not acting or performing for anyone. I don't have anybody watching and I don't need to put on a show. He does. And his fanboys egg him on, not realizing... He's not making sense and losing the argument. He has no evidence and calls that philosophical. I call that a failure. In his desperation, he turns to the Quran and quotes a sentence so that has nothing to, to do Quran, with this Quran, at all. God says in the Quran, whoever he wills, he gives males. His whoever he wills, conclusion he gives is males. that it's whoever the test of life, wills, where his God has declared he has all knowledge. So a test is ludicrous. Is superfluous and it's nonsensical as the outcome is known and unchangeable. People are being, I don't know, created to be able to pass the test and fail. That means they were not created to be able to pass the test and then they're punished for that bad creation. So from a logical point of view, this is a huge big fail. But he does not understand that I'm not appealing to, to anything logical. I'm not appealing to perfect design and is unable to adjust to what he is hearing. I'm merely pointing out that if I have people with functioning bodies and people who don't have functioning bodies, this does not match the claims made in the Quran regarding a perfect God and the best of all creators. I'm not expecting perfect creation. I'm just expecting adequate equipment to be created if this is some good creator. But we don't see that. So this is not about good or perfect design, but the claims that are being made. And at this stage... Com, what have you published? Have you come up with anything sound? Have you come up with anything rigorous? You just turn up on a, on a Saturday afternoon on a YouTube page with a stupid picture and you try and make some points and get refuted, right? It what? gets quite comical. He realizes he can't trap me using his usual dishonest tactics. So he needs to smear me intellectually to make me look bad in front of his audience. And at the same time, appealing to authority. So we have multiple logical fallacies within just a few minutes. What is, okay, this is actually quite sad, right? It, because this is, I've schooled him for, for like 10 years or so. And he still can't understand what a person is who simply does not believe that gods or goddesses exist. I am not supposed to be aligning myself with anyone. I'm not part of an ideological group. Why can't, why can't you treat me like a vegetarian and see whether your nonsense and dishonest tactics still make sense? Because then I'm sure anybody will see they don't. But Suvor keeps on telling me, I can talk, and when I start just making some sense, even if it's just after a few seconds, he interrupts me. And I want to give you the mic to you, and I want to hear you talk more, because the more you're talking, the more you're slipping up. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brian. If, what I have done is I've taken your videos, I've looked at your arguments, I found that you don't have arguments. What you are doing is, all you are doing is... Wait, wait, hang on. How, how can you, you say I, I don't have enough? He opens up another false dichotomy and then does his silly laugh, knowing he is way out of his depth here. He is, this is, he's, he's borderline here with some compulsive disorder. Maybe he should have a professional check him out before he like completely goes over the edge. He, and before he goes radical, because he looks obsessed. He looks like, I, I don't know, he, he, he knows he's beat and he still lashes out. And he knows I'm talking about my video rebuttals of last week. And yet he asked me to do this. Which book did I argue? Did I take the argument and misrepresent it? And come on, this is no longer normal. We can see here, if we scan Google Scholar, that this Rosenberg guy, who's a very bright guy, lots of reasonable stuff. He's got like 164 publications. 
And Subur expects me to know a specific scholar, a specific philosopher, to know a specific sentence in one specific publication, as well as the context, as well as all refutations. This is pathetic. This is sick. Here is someone who thinks Rosenberg is wrong. And this is the crux of the problem. I can now pull out other philosophers who will say something and so can some more. It becomes a pissing contest. Who has more philosophers on their side? Totally avoiding the actual point. And the same thing, by the way, is the problem in discussing Islam, where people will get into a scholar competition. It's useless and a waste of time, as was demonstrated here once again. But Subo has nothing else to offer, and he must deflect somehow. And I think that the guys on the top row here should have realized something is seriously going wrong here for Islam apologetics and rope him in. But maybe, maybe also they don't realize this and are blinded by the polemics this Subo is firing off. I am off. giving you my opinion and if you and have your a opinion doesn't count because you haven't published any papers, you haven't done any research and you have I'm no idea what you're talking about. No. And now this Tony guy chimes in again and wants to offload his stuff and starts babbling about biogenesis. Number one, you want facts, right, Fred? Do you, know, do you know that life only comes from life? We have never seen life coming from non-life. Number one, that's a fact. It's like a child you know, with, a, with a big mouth. Okay, so Bo takes over and again doesn't understand and thinks he needs to offload his nonsense once again. Do I really need to explain this? The statement is that life originating from non-life has not been observed. Okay, to which I replied that there was a time when only white swans were observed. Saying, <laughs> do I really need to explain this? Oh God, this is embarrassing. At some stage, if you observe only white swans, you need to state that at the moment we are seeing white swans. So out of the population of 100 swans that we have seen, 100 of them were white. And that is all you can say. And then along comes a black one. And this changes everything. This now becomes out of the population of 101 swans, 100 were white and one was black. Right? So that's how easy it is. Now, the same thing is true. Life originating from non-life has not been observed until one day you do. And then this changes things. Now, what are you going to do? Now, all of a sudden, we have a natural explanation for the origin of life. Where at the moment, we have origin of universe, life and consciousness as the three areas where we really have no clue. There's others, okay, there's other places where we don't have the information and there's, there's other things where we don't even know that we don't know them. But at least here, we know these three areas we don't know yet. Now suddenly, this is where they stick their God, by the way, and now suddenly, we have the information. Now what? Does that mean that Islam is going to collapse because of that? I don't know. We just, look, we only have a limited set of information. And we need to be honest. We need to be patient. And we need to say that we don't fully understand abiogenesis today. That does not mean we never will. Instead of taking on this rather trivial bit of reasoning, Subur can't, can't even grasp this. This, you know, this is so easy. And again, makes wild assertions and accusations, demonstrating his limited intellectual processing capability. Now, saying there is insufficient information regarding the origin of life is not faith. I don't know where he gets this from. My goodness, why does nobody teach them rational and logical thinking, but just, just the basics? And then this Tony again, not exactly displaying any grown-up line of reasoning. Uh, please note, I answer extremely succinctly using yes and no, answering the questions. Something I've been accused of not doing. Oh boy. Okay, when I show him that he's wrong, he simply starts shouting something about the law of biogenesis. Right. I have reality. This is not a side reality. And, and in reality, all we see is life coming from life. That's a fact. Oh my God, <laughs> yes, that's a fact. Yeah, it's called the law of biogenesis. <laughs> what a douchebag. <laughs> and Mansour once again shows his ignorance of what a logical fallacy is. I've noticed that Muslim apologists think that assigning a derogatory term or a, a derogatory attribute to a person is an ad hominem. And something they don't like, they title a strawman. 
oblivious of what these expressions really describe. Now, so Vorbeer makes a complete fool of himself. He first launches yet another appeal to authority. Constantly repeats he has not interrupted me when that is precisely <laughs> what he's done for half an hour now. He really, and really, he asks me to verify his position. Right now, give me one philosophical paper, one philosopher who's willing to acknowledge your position and that crude reality which you're trying to point at. By bringing up a name, something I have declared I detest, and that is cowardly as well as useless. Something he doesn't understand, even if I were to do what he is asking me to do. But he is incapable of making a single cogent argument, and turns to me to do this for him. Man, this is ridiculous. And again he says, I'm going to give you the mic for the next one minute. This ends after just a few seconds when Sabur once again talks over me. He repeats for the 658th time that I have no evidence for a claim I did not make. So if they can't find anything to back up their nonsense, they fabricate something and tell me it's my fault. <laughs> this is hilarious. But actually quite sad if you think about it. These little apologists need their God so much they are willing to sacrifice not only honesty, integrity, authenticity, and all ethics, but on top of that, lie and deceive to mislead their own audience. I know that I did not, I was not created by a supernatural You know what, creator. this, was, this what is really poor marketing. Yeah, this is, this is a... Am I really contradicting myself? No, I'm not. All I said was that I am the result of two cells merging, and that the claim of a designer slash creator is refuted by reality. I also stated unequivocally that if they want to appeal to an incompetent designer, they are welcome to do so. So, no changing of claims. It seems they have a huge problem understanding and processing what is not pre-chewed by Islamic scholars, having been taught what to think and not how to think. Right now, it's not going to make me go to your YouTube page, because right now you're not making any sense. Tough luck. He can't keep quiet about it and constantly needs to babble, but he says not going to my page, which he has done. And that, for some odd reason, that is a contradiction. Now, FMT in his closing remark claims something. You hear to this because, Fred, in all honesty with you, you were very self-contradicting. You kept claiming to have evidence. When we got into it, you would say, I don't know. Um, you saying philosophy is bad and all that, and you... Is he crazy? Did he really hear me say this? I did not. I objected to name dropping and appeals to authority. I said that you can't continuously use philosophers and philosophy as a sole line of argumentation. At some stage, you need to have the rubber hit the road. He claims that there are good reasons to accept a creator, but then why doesn't he bring them up? Why hide behind philosophers instead of just presenting the evidence if it is really that compelling. And here, <laughs> Sabo even interrupts his own panel member, like a little excited boy who has heard something he can finally comprehend because it is the theist language he is familiar with and can switch off his brain. When, when he gets really obnoxious and I react, I'm kicked out yet again and let on. And the exchange now gets silly. Listen, listen to the short exchange, which is about my claim why I reject an intelligent, merciful, perfect creator using a hip deficiency as an example. And you're committing the fallacy of basically linking a point which is completely irrelevant, which somehow looks like it's relevant. It's a non sequitur. So you're saying a person with a broken hip is in a worse position than a person with a functioning hip. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. Okay, that is my argument. And it doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense to him that a person with a functioning hip is better off than a person with a non-functioning, a broken hip. Okay, I, I rest my case. Yeah, you, you can't discuss anything like a grown-up person with someone who doesn't even have like a low-grade education here and is not equipped with even the basic rational thinking capabilities. These Aira Dawa guys are a complete waste of time. And I, Mansa must have been smoking something to look that spaced out. 
Hashim just sulks all the time and the guy in the middle doesn't seem to know what's happening. But I had a bit of fun and was entertained for an hour, even if the level is not what I would expect from an adult person. But then again, my own performance was also below par and I freely admit this. Hashim, in his closing statement, makes a really odd observation, telling me that I was the one who moved to a bad designer, which is not the case. And then you shifted to a bad designer. I just asked what kind of a designer this is if the body is in a bad shape when Tony claimed he was clearly designed. Hashim asked me nonsensical questions about the future huh? and is clearly confused about the way epistemology works and how the tool of science is used to form conclusions. Dear Hashim, this is exclusively for you. I have created all flies, mosquitoes and gnats on this planet. Okay, now what? Will you ask me for evidence of this claim or not? If this silly claim can be identified as silly by you, how come you can't do the same when it is claimed by some supernatural, undetectable, super-duper being that can't even write a halfway intelligible and logically sound book? He also rides off into the philosophical questions and that can't possibly be answered in an environment such as this because the topic of nothing covers a vast amount of options and definitions. And, well, non-existence cannot come into existence, really. The Quran begs to differ because it says we created him out of nothing. And literally, it says not anything, the, the shayan. So... Okay, and then I catch Mansour applying one of his standard deception tactics. I, I noticed in the past that when he is caught with a statement, one where he claims he knows something about it, he adds, do you? We still, if you, if you look, have you heard of quantum field theory? Yes. Okay. Have you? So you can, yeah, have you? You don't know. Okay, what is quantum field theory? Okay, before we go into that, in uh, quantum see, field... This is the, uh, super, uh, Mansour, I've okay, heard Fred, you so Fred, many times. Do you I'm, know I'm, you I'm, say, Okay, you I'm explaining yes, you quantum field theory to you. But you don't know it? This do you indicates that he doesn't have a clue about the topic at hand, yet pretends he does. So, I take him to task and show that he was just bullshitting and lying, simply pretending he has heard this before when he has not. It's just part of the show for his audience. So now I'm finally ejected and they carry on boasting and patting themselves on the back. The interesting part is where, like I said, Sabu admits he's too scared to come with the gin tonic yet watches what I publish on him. Um, and you know, this guy, he's somebody who's been literally following us for years. I mean, last week I'm at Speaker's Corner after a you know, long time because of coronavirus. And he made a video just analyzing the talks, right? And, and you know, coming up with this type of stuff. Well, here's another video. Subur, you can add this to your lists. And I hope you are learning. After years of leaving you alone due to your inactivity, you are once again making silly claims, which require a robust response. Hence my videos. You really delivered a piss poor performance on this SC Dawa episode. I doubt the others have the mental capacity to expand their horizon and to somehow rope you in. So you guys constantly throw around words like sophistry, fallacious, deceptive, illogical, ignorant, yet never once think about a self-check to see if you are guilty of exactly that. But come on, if you have the guts, which I sincerely doubt, you will take up the offer and come over for a chat on a Friday evening on the Gin and Tonic Show. You're more than welcome. See you in the next video. Bye.